In this video, we're going to see an example of polymorphism. We'll start off with a base set of code being the animal's inheritance example we saw before, where we have our animal base class, that's an abstract class with speak, move, and get name methods. We have a dog and we have a cat. And if we run this, if you remember the dog and the cat, they do what they want to do. So we left you with a little bit of a preview of what's going on here, where we can create an animal reference and point that to a dog object. And since dog is a subclass of animal, then this will work. And we can use that to call any method that the animal knows about, but we can't use fetch. But we can actually do something even, at least what I think is more impressive. I can create an animal array. Now you may say, how can we create a, a, an animal array because we can't instantiate an animal? And the reason is this isn't an array of animal objects, it's an array of animal object references and those can refer to anything. So I'll add a new cat, a new dog. And uh, that'll be sufficient for now. And I can't call this A anymore. I'll just call it ARR. And now I have an array. I can use this array of animal references. And I'll put this up here. So now I can do a for each loop. So for every animal in the array, and I'm going to basically do the same thing I do here. So I'm going to copy that in here and then do some quick modification of that code. So we'll print the animal's name. Or actually, let's say animal, and then we'll do an index. Oh, we don't have an index here. So we'll say... A dot get name, we get their name. And then we will have them speak. We'll have them move. Actually, no. The array is ARR, but the, the variable I used here is X. So let me use X there. And since we have dogs, cats, whatever, we don't know. So we're going to not call fetch there. And then we'll have a print line at the end. And then let's print an extra line there. Let's run this. And you can see there's our animal and it's doing whatever the animal does. Let's create another animal class. Let's create a bat class. Its super class is going to be animal. Let's just make sure we pick the right one. So notice we give it a fully qualified name there so that we pick up the right one since we have more than one animal class in our package hierarchy. So for our bat, we'll have a speak. It just uses its sonar to speak. Bats do something else that's sort of unique is that they fly. So we'll create this fly method. But... What you should think is those bats aren't the only animals that fly. Maybe what we need is an interface. We'll call it flyer. And that interface is going to have just one method, which I think you can imagine what that might be called. It'll be called fly. So now bat is going to extend animal and it's going to implement flyer. So we're getting some, oh, that needs to be implements. Let's see if that results. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. And now fly is an override, is a method that overrides what's in the interface. So we're going to put the override 
attribute on that method. I also think that we should re-implement move. Again, that'll be an override. The way we're going to implement move is we're going to call fly. So notice, even though this is a animal method, we're implement using the interfaces method because this class bat both extends animal and implements flyer. Now keep in mind, we can only extend one class, but we can implement any number of interfaces. And I want to make this capital capitalized so that it lines up with what the naming convention is. So let's create a new animal just to see what our newfound powers are here. I'm going to create a new class called Eagle. Its super class is going to be animal. And again, make sure we get module 3's animal class. And in the interfaces, it's going to implement flyer. So you'll notice my Eagle class already has an interface. I'm going to delete that. It has a fly method and it has a speak method. So I'll implement fly first. And our eagle will soar. To speak, I think eagle shriek. Okay, we'll go with that. And I think also, like with the bat, and we can just copy this method over. We'll have a move method that just calls fly. Same reason as, as with the bat. Why not do it? This gives us a, a few new animals. So let's go back to my animals and let's add a bat. And we'll add a new eagle. And if we run this, we see that now we get our bat and eagle as part of our output. We've seen that we have we can have an array of type animal because those are object references, not actual animals, and we can instantiate abstract types. So doing it as an array is, is still okay because we're not actually instantiating anything. And it turns out the same thing is true for interfaces. So I can say flyer f is equal to, and I'll have an array with a new bat, a new eagle, and we'll have another another eagle, and uh, we'll call this one freedom. Okay, so we have a bat and two eagles, and we're going to do something very similar to what we did above for flyer x and that's nf you might think why don't we just do this let's get the name but the problem is get name is undefined for type flyer flyers don't know how to get their name so we can't do this the only thing we can do is fly because that's what unites everything that implements the flyer class so you can see there we go we have a bat flying and then we have two eagles flying. Just to show you that there's nothing that this flyer is actually independent of animal. I can create an airplane object, or I should say an airplane class. So it's going to have as its super class object. And actually, I think we need to put it, we'll just put it in the polymorphism module, we won't put it in the animal package because that doesn't make sense, but it's going to implement the flyer interface. We don't really care what this, we're not really trying to imp implement a real airplane class here. So we'll just say that the constructor will call the super constructor. And then when it flies, I guess we didn't say if it was a jet or not. So here is the simplest plane simple that I can make and that's what it'll do when it flies. So let's save that. Go back to our my animals. We'll create a new 
airplane. And when we run our code, we have errors. I don't, I don't see any errors. Ah, uh, it's an airplane. Ah, missing a semicolon there. So if we go to my animals now, and now you can see as part of the flying loop, we have this little airplane symbol. So let me put in the output that we're going through the flyer array. And here are the animal array. And hopefully uh, that gives you an idea of how polymorphism works. Again, we can use abstract class references or regular class references, as long as there's a inheritance relationship. We can use interface references, again, because we're not we're using those references to refer to actual concrete objects, not actual flyer objects. This is a bad object and an airplane object and so forth. So we'll use this idea a lot. This, this is actually a really powerful idea because if we set up our interfaces and class hierarchies correctly, we can actually do a lot of reducing code. So in the other example we did for polymorphism with the staff, you can see how we have a lot of different staff member types that calculate their pay differently, but we just have one array with all of them and we call pay and we get their correct payment type.